Hi friend, grab a coffee, get comfortable, because today we're going to talk about something that every single PLC programmer has experienced at some point. It's that moment when you open up your PLC project, maybe it's an old one that you haven't touched in years, or maybe you just received the project from a colleague and your heart just sinks in. You scroll through the blogs, the tags, the data types, and it just feels like chaos. Names don't match, there's no order, your main program cycle is overloaded with random logic, global tags are flying everywhere, and you're thinking to yourself, what on earth is going on here? How did this logic ever run a machine? Now, here's the thing. That is not just you. That's basically everyone. I've been programming Siemens PLCs for over 20 years, and I can tell you, every single one of us has had messy projects even the really good programmers. And here's the difference. Some people will accept that mess as the way it is. They would say something like, well, it's programming. It's always going to be complicated. And others, the pros, they learn how to fix it. They learn how to structure their projects in a way that's clean, maintainable, and scalable. And that's what I want to show you today. So in this video, we're going to dive into why your TIA portal projects often end up such a mess and more importantly, how to fix them. I'll walk you through four key steps that will completely change the way that you look at your PLC projects. And trust me, you'll want to stick around until the very end because the last step that's going to be the glue that's going to hold everything together is the one thing that makes sure that your projects don't just start out clean, but they will stay clean over time. And as a bonus, I've also put together a free resource waiting for you at the end of this video, something that will help you drastically improve the structure of your PLC projects in Tia Portal. Sounds good? All right, let's jump in. Step one is all about naming and structure. Now, I know that sounds almost boring compared to all the cool features in Tia Portal. But trust me, if your projects feel messy, this is where most of the pain is hiding. Let me give you a real example. I once opened a project where the temperature tags for a heating unit looked like this. Temp1, heat underscore temp, temperature sensor, temp underscore heat, temp underscore, all in the same project. And the best part, some of these tags were actually pointing at the exact same signal. Now here's the thing, your PLC doesn't really care. It will run just fine with 100 variations of your temperature tag. But you care when you come back six months later and you're trying to troubleshoot. Which one is the actual tag? Which one is used in the logic and, and which one is connected to the HMI? That's when you start scrolling, you start clicking, you start to second guessing yourself. 10 minutes gone, just trying to answer, what did I call this thing again? And if you're under pressure, you start guessing, you grab the first tag that you find, maybe even create a new one just to be safe. And before you know it, you created a bigger mess than what you started with. And that's the danger of inconsistent naming. It doesn't just slow you down, it multiplies the chaos. So why not instead adapt a standard naming convention for all your tags in your project? For example, you can start all tag names related to status signals with STS, all command tags with CMD, all parameter tags with PAR, and all default tags with FLT. Just an example. So start by defining a proper naming convention for all your tags, all your variables in your project, and save headaches later on. Now let's talk about structure. Here's what usually happens. Everything in your project ends up in one giant pile. Your main block is stuffed with logic, your program blocks folder is just a long endless list, and your tags, they're just scattered around everywhere. Technically, that works, but what does it feel like? It kind of feels like walking into a workshop where every tool is just dumped in a heap on the floor. And if you need a hammer, sure, eventually you might find one. But when you're trying to do a real work, this lack of order will grind you down. That's why structure matters. Structure isn't about being neat for the sake of being neat. It's about reducing friction. It's about being able to open a project and immediately have an overview a sense of where things live, what belongs together, and how the system flows. Because here's the thing, when your project doesn't have structure, you don't just waste time, you lose trust. You lose trust in your own ability to find what you need. You lose trust in the project itself, and everyone who looks at your work loses trust in you. Have you ever handed a project over to a customer or a colleague, and you almost felt embarrassed? Like you wanted to say, don't judge me, I was in a rush? That's the feeling of poor structure. On the flip side, a project with a clean structure communicates professionalism instantly. Even if the customer probably doesn't fully understand what they're looking at, they feel it. They see order. They see clarity. They think, this person knows what they're doing. And that's the real power of structure. It's not about showing off to the PLC. The PLC doesn't care what you name your tags or, or how you organize your blocks. It's about showing up as a professional for yourself 
and for others. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, like, okay, Hans, but this sounds like extra work. Why spend time worrying about names, about structure, when I can actually just write logic that makes the machine run? And I get it, you know, when you're in the heat of the project, you're in the midst of it all, you just want to get things working. But here's what I've learned the hard way. Bad naming and no structure costs you more time than it saves. At first, Massey feels fast. You throw tags in, you copy-paste code, you pile everything into one block. It feels like progress. But later, when you can't find anything, when you need to explain it to someone else, or when you need to make changes on the pressure, that's when you pay for it. Clean naming and structure is an investment. It's a little discipline now for a lot of save time later. And not just save time. Save stress, save frustration, save embarrassment. Think about it. How many times have you opened one of your older projects and you thought like, Oh man, what was I even doing here? That's the tax you pay for ignoring naming and structure. Now compare that to opening a project where everything is consistent, where the naming makes sense and where you instantly understand the flow. That's a confidence boost. That's a project you want to work on that you actually enjoy. And that confidence changes everything. Because when you trust your own projects, you move faster. You explain things more clearly. You're proud to hand your work over to your colleagues and your customers, they feel that too. So step one isn't about some hidden feature in Tia Portal. It's about committing to clarity. Clear names, clear structure, order instead of chaos. And once you get this right, you'll already feel a huge difference. But here's the thing. This is just a foundation. Naming and structure make your projects less painful, but they don't make them more scalable. For that, we need step two. Because step two is where the magic really starts to happen. It's where we take this idea of clarity and we build on it with modular design. And that's what's going to let you create projects that don't just work today, but actually grow tomorrow. So once you get naming and structure under control, the next big step is modularization. Now, what do I mean by that? Most messy projects, they are messy because everything is just crammed together. You've got one giant function block doing everything under the sun. Or you've got a program where recipes, equipment, alarm, user interface, all are crammed into the same space. It works, sure, the PLC doesn't care, but it's fragile. One little change in one part of the PLC program and you've suddenly changed something in another part. It's like building a house where the, the plumbing, the wiring and the walls are all poured into the same block of concrete. Yeah, it holds together, but Try replacing a pipe in this setup. You're just going to tear the whole thing apart. That's exactly what happens in PLC projects that like a modular setup. Now, modularization is simply saying, let's separate this stuff. Let's give each part of the system its own little home, its own little responsibility. The conveyor logic belongs here, the pump logic belongs here, the recipe management lives in its own space. And the magic is if each part of your project is in its own module, you can change one thing without fear of breaking anything else. Just think about how much easier it is to troubleshoot a system if you know like, okay, the conveyor isn't running, I just need to look into this conveyor module right here. You're not scrolling through hundreds of networks just wondering if the conveyor logic is maybe hidden somewhere here between the recipe calculations. And here's the other huge benefit, scalability. When your application is modular, adding more equipment is no longer a nightmare. Instead of copy-pasting logic all over the place, you just reuse the module. You want a second conveyor? Cool. It's the same module, just a different instance. You want five pump controls instead of one? No problem. Just copy the pump module five times and you're good to go. This is the difference between projects that actually collapse under their own weight and projects that can actually grow. Now, let me be honest with you. Modularization, that takes discipline because in the short term, it feels slower. Instead of shoving everything into one big function block, you actually need to take the time to separate things. You need to decide this piece of equipment belongs here, this belongs in this module, and when you have a deadline hanging over your head, it's tempting to skip this step. But here's the truth. Skipping modularization is like skipping exercise. You might get away for it in the short run, but in the long run, you pay the price. You pay the price with fragile logic, you pay the price with sleepless nights on site, and you pay the price with projects that are impossible to maintain. On the flip side, if you do modularize, you will feel the benefits every single time you open that project. You feel it when you debug, you feel it when you hand over that project to your colleague, and you feel it when you revisit that code six months later and you immediately know where to look. And this is not just a technical thing, it's a mindset shift. Modularization is really about respecting boundaries, it's about saying every little piece of this equipment deserves its own little world. It also makes you look like a pro because customers can sense it. They might not know the details of modular design, but trust me, they notice when your project is consistent. They notice when your changes don't create chaos. 
They know when problems get solved quickly because everything is in its place. And you'll notice it too in your confidence. So step two is simple in concept, but it's extremely powerful in execution. Stop writing logic line after line, start thinking modular. Do this and you'll see your projects transform from something that's fragile and messy to something that actually scales, that grows with your machine and that you're proud to put your name on. And that sets us up perfectly for step three. Because modularization by itself is powerful, but if your modules are still tangled up together, you haven't solved the whole problem. Step three is about loosening those connections. It's about creating clean interfaces so your modules can talk to each other without creating a web of dependencies. And once you get that right, that's when your projects really start to feel professional. All right, so we've cleaned up naming and structure. We've broken down the application into smaller modules and already your projects start to feel lighter. But if we stop here, we're not quite finished. Because here's the problem, even if you have nice and tidy modules, but those modules are tangled up with each other, then you're still gonna have a mess. Let me explain. Imagine you're building a house with different rooms, a kitchen, a living room, a bathroom, a bedroom. Great, that's modular. But then imagine you run pipes and wires randomly through the walls. So the kitchen light switch also turns on the bedroom fan, and the bathroom sink only works when the oven is running. Technically, you've got modules, but they're so tangled together that the whole thing is still a nightmare. And that's what happens in PLC projects when modules are tightly coupled. You've got your pump logic and your recipe handling in separate blocks, but they're constantly poking in each other's data, grabbing tags directly or sharing random global tags. It's chaos disguised as order. So what's the fix? The fix is to create clear interfaces. An interface is basically an agreement between the two modules. Here's what I need, here's what I'll give you back. Nothing more, nothing less. When you do this, your modules suddenly stop depending on each other's inner workings. The pump module, for example, it doesn't need to know every intricate detail on how the recipe handling module operates. All it needs to know is, do you want me to run? At what speed? And I'll tell you if I'm running or if I'm in a fault state. And I'll tell you whether I'm running or faulted. That's it. Clean, simple, professional. That's the heart of clean architecture. It's the idea that your system is built in layers. Each layer, each module has their own responsibilities and they only communicate through clearly defined interfaces. Why does this matter? Because this is what makes your project resilient. When you want to change something, you only touch the inside of the module. As long as you don't break the interface, everything else is working. Think about how different that feels compared to a tangled project. You know, in a messy project, every small change, it feels like you're diffusing a bomb. You're holding your breath. You're hoping that you don't break three other parts of the system. In a clean architecture, you can confidently make changes because you know that the boundaries, they will stay intact. And here's another benefit. Interfaces, they make your project easier to communicate. When you explain your logic to a colleague, you don't need to walk them through 500 lines of code. You just say, this module right here, it takes these inputs and it gives these outputs. Done. They get it. And if they want to dive deeper, they can, but they don't need to if they just want to understand the big picture. And that clarity is gold when you're working in teams or you're handing over to maintenance or you're standing in front of a customer. Because nothing builds trust like being able to explain your system simply. Now let me be real with you. Building interfaces, it takes discipline. It means resisting the urge to grab a local tag just this once. It means thinking of your modules as little black boxes that should only interact through official channels. And once you get into that habit, you will never want to go back because you will realize this is what makes my projects scale. This is what makes them maintainable. This is what makes me look like a professional who doesn't just stuff logic together, but actually engineers solutions. So step three is not about building modules. It's about building independent modules that talk to each other through interfaces. Now we've got one more step to go, and this is a step that I've told you about in the beginning of the video, the step that most people skip, because you can have clean names, tidy modules, even nice interfaces, but if you don't get this last step right, it all falls apart over time. Step four is about mindset and maintenance. The discipline that keeps your projects clean, not just on day one, but for years to come. Okay, so we talked about naming, structure, modules and clean interfaces. If you get those four right, your projects will already feel a thousand times better. But here's the catch, none of it matters if you don't maintain it. And this is the part that almost everyone skips. This is the reason that projects that actually start out clean eventually move back into chaos. Let me explain, when you're in the middle of a project, deadlines are looming, machines need to run, the customer is calling, that's when you feel, that's when you're tired. 
And that's when your discipline gets tested. That's when you're tempted to cut corners. You're thinking, I don't have time to set this up properly. I just throw in a quick tag here. I'll stuff some logic in the OB1. I'll fix it later. We've all done it. I've done it. And most of us never go back and fix it. And that's how the mess creeps back into your application. One shortcut at a time. So step four, it's about adopting a mindset of maintenance. It's taking the decision to tell yourself, I don't just want this application to look good today. I want it to stay clean, stay clear, stay professional for the long haul. It means reviewing your PLC application regularly. After each big milestone, after each change you make in the application, take a break, sit back and ask yourself, did I create messy logic in this version? Did I skip clarity somewhere? Can I clean this up before moving forward? And this is where the professionals stand out. Everyone can start a project clean, but the real pros, they are the one that keep it clean, even under pressure. They are the ones who have the discipline to say, no, I'm not going to let this slide. I'm going to do it the right way. And you know what? Your customers, they notice. Your colleagues, they notice. They notice when your projects remain predictable, consistent, and easy to work with. That's how you build trust. That's how you build a reputation. And let's be honest, it also feels better for you. Now I want you to imagine something. Imagine opening a project that you built two years ago. Instead of feeling nervous, instead of thinking, oh man, this is going to be painful, you smile because you know it's still clean. You know it's still structured. You know exactly where everything is. And that's the payoff of this last step. It's not glamorous. It's not about a shiny new feature in TIA portal. It's about a mindset, it's about a habit, it's about a commitment to professionalism. So friend, don't skip it. This is the glue that holds everything together. Because naming structure, modularization and interfaces, that will give you a clean project. But maintenance, discipline, mindset, that's what keeps it clean. And that's how you go from being just another PLC programmer hacking logic together to becoming a professional engineer that builds systems that last. All right, so let's wrap this up. We've covered a lot today, so here's a quick recap. Step one was all about naming and structure, because if you don't start with clarity, everything else falls apart. Step two was modularization. Stop building giant blocks with tangled logic and start giving each part of your machine its own place. Step three was about interfaces and clean architecture. Keeping your modules loosely coupled so a change in one place doesn't break everything else. And step four, and the step that most people skip, was about maintenance and mindset. The discipline that keeps your projects clean, not just at the start, but for the long haul. Now here's the truth, none of this is theory. These are habits that you can start building today. And the sooner you start, the sooner you'll feel the difference. You'll stop dreading your projects, you'll stop looking hours for tags. You'll start moving with confidence, knowing exactly where everything is, knowing your system, your PLC application can grow without collapsing. And if you want to go deeper, I've got a special gift for you today. I put together a free guide called Five Simple Steps to Drastically Improve Your PLC Program Structure in TIA Portal. It's short, it's practical, and it will give you a complete roadmap to start applying what we've talked about today. So do your future self a favor, go download that guide. The link is right below this video in the description. Because here's the deal, you don't have to keep living with messy projects. You don't have to keep wasting time and stressing yourself out. With a few clear steps, you can clean up your projects, you can scale them with confidence, and you can show up as the professional that you already are. So grab the guide, start applying it, and watch how much smoother your next project feels. Friend, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If this video was helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and share it with someone else who's stuck in TIA portal. Stay structured, I'll see you in the next one.